please let us know in the chat if you'd like to ask a question. We'll start with Lillian St. James. Hi, James. What um, what are you looking forward to about coming to Detroit and kind of establishing a tandem, I guess, with Vila Huso? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, honestly, Detroit was uh, was a place we were really excited, uh, you know, when we're looking um, at different teams and, and really excited to be here. I mean, I think that uh, just the organization and the direction of the team and, and whatnot, it's uh, it's a really exciting uh, place to be right now. So, um, yeah, I mean, and and heard a lot of good things about uh, about Billy. Um, you know, I think he's a, a heck of a goalie and, and um, you know, looking forward to uh, you know, competing together with him and, and uh, you know, trying to help the squad out uh, as best we can. You look and sound very excited about coming to a team that has not made the playoffs for seven straight years. What what kind of stokes that excitement for you? Uh, you know, I think a couple of things. I mean, um, you know, obviously I've been, <laughs> I've been blessed to play in this league for, for a long time. And, and uh, I started off in Toronto, which is obviously – uh, a big hockey market and, and there's lots of buzz and, and there's a certain excitement um, when you play in a big market. Uh, and then for the last couple of years, you know, I've been in smaller markets. And so I think it's, there's something exciting about coming back to, uh, you know, a traditional hockey market and an original six team. There's, there's uh, obviously a ton of history and, and whatnot. And so um, I know that's, that's really exciting. And then just, uh, like I said, the direction of the team, um, you know, obviously um, you probably haven't had the success that, that they would have wanted the last couple of years. And I think that's, you know, kind of a symptom of, of the success they've had in the past, right. In the, in a, in a cap world. And so, um, but I think now uh, they're building, I think Steve, he's got a, he's obviously putting his, his fingerprint on the team. And, and um, I think everyone around the league sees uh, kind of what's going on here and, and, uh, and what they're doing. And I think it's exciting to be a part of that. Do you have a uh, much familiarity with Vila or just, uh, yeah no uh not not really i mean i've just uh seen him play a few times um and i uh, just heard some some good things about him from from other guys that know him or have played with him and so um we texted a little bit yesterday obviously when i signed and so uh yeah seems seems like a great guy and and uh you know we're looking forward to uh to pushing each other and and uh trying to give uh kind of give this team the best uh the best uh, puck stop in as possible Thank you. Ed Colfin. Hey, James. Welcome to Detroit. Hey, is it a different, how big of a different mindset is it going into a situation where you know they're going to be, you know, more of a tandem or maybe not even get more half the games or whatnot compared to being you get the, the guy more or less on a roster? Is it a huge different mindset? Or, I mean, you've been in the league now a while. You're the type of guy to probably handle something like that. Yeah, no, I, honestly, I think your mindset is, is usually, it's, it's the same kind of no matter what the, what the scenario is for the most part. I mean, um, you know, how I'm built and, and I think probably most guys in the league is, is you're a competitor and, and, and you want to be at the top of your game, no matter if you're playing 10 games a year or, or 82, you know, it's, uh, doesn't matter if it's practice or, or morning skater or whatnot. It's uh, you're bringing your best and, and and you want to show your best and you want to be, you know, you want to strive to be perfect. Right. So, so it's, you know, that's, that's your main focus and and that's your main goal, no matter what. So um, if that translates into 20 starts or 50 starts, you know, that, that, you know, has, is yet to be, is yet to be seen. And then, and then from there, then you, then you kind of handle the, the other parts of, of, you know, whether you get an amount that that you would like, if that's the right word, or 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 whatnot, but but that's um, that's kind of the, the secondary. You know, your main focus and and what drives you is is to be your best every day, and so that's um, kind of irrelevant from from you know the result. James, were the Wings a team that you kind of identified early on, or did you see? Oh wow, that could be a pretty good fit there. Yeah, yeah. I think early on, it was something that uh, definitely piqued my interest and in, in our family. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, I could I could go on for a long time. The, the amount of good things that I've heard about the organization and the ownership and the team and, and whatnot. I mean, you're hard pressed to find anyone in the league who who says anything bad about Detroit. And so, um, 
yeah, it was something early on that I thought could, could be a good fit and uh, was extremely excited about it. And so, um, you know, now that it's, that it's happened, you know, we're, uh, we're pretty excited. Sounds good. Thanks for this. You bet. Jonathan Mills. Hey James, you talked about, you've been in the league for quite some time when you were kind of first starting off and developing, who were some of the guys that maybe took you under their wing and kind of helped mentor you? Uh, yeah, good question. So I was, I was really lucky. Um, you know, you always have your favorite goals as you're growing up and, and you're a kid and, and, and whatnot, but, um, so those kind of changed as I got older and, and whatnot, but, uh, one of my favorite goalies right before I made, um, you know, made the NHL was, was Jagir. And, uh, it was pretty cool that, uh, that Jiggy actually, um, ended up signing and, and being with the Leafs and, and when I came up, so when I actually broke into the league, he was, he was playing on the team. So it was, it was, uh, a really cool, um, experience to be able to play, you know, with your, your kind of your hero, right. And, and just kind of watch him in practice and learn from him and, and see how we handle different situations. And, and so, um, you know, I was, I was really lucky to, to uh, kind of have that experience. And then is some of that mentorship kind of what you would like to bring to this dressing room too, with a lot of the young guys and just, you know, being in this room and with this team? Yeah, I think so. I mean, um, obviously they, they went out last, I think free agency and, and got some, some good, some really good players and some good veteran players. And, and I think um, they did that again to, to some extent this, this off season and, and, so yeah, I, I think that's something you want to bring to to the locker room. And, I, and I, honestly, I think it's not really something you think about. I think it's just it's just you go out there and and you play and you compete how you would naturally compete. And and um, you know, yeah, obviously you're talking to guys and, you, and you're giving little tips or here and there, and you're and you're you're sharing experiences that you went through. Like obviously that happens, but you know, I think uh, you know a, a lot of what gets taught is is you know, of what people see as opposed to almost what you say. Right. So I think you kind of go about your, your life and, and uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, if they see something they, they like or whatnot, then they'll, then they'll pick up, pick up on it. Thank you. Welcome to Detroit. Thank you. And Sarkhan. Yeah, hi, James. Uh, 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 you've, uh, I imagine you've played quite a bit uh, against uh, Sprung and Augustus Beher, especially the past couple of years playing in the West. Uh, what stands out the most to you about them, particularly their uh, shooting ability? Yeah, so uh, Sprong, you know, I've, I played against him a few times and and I think, um, you know, I think something that stands out about him is is I think probably what you said is, is his shot and his, uh, his ability to to get a shot off maybe too you know i think um i think it's it's a type of release that kind of surprises guys or 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 takes guys you know by surprise i think it's it's there's something unique about both the way he plays and and the way he um plays the game offensively and i think that's that's really started to show i think in the last couple of years but more specifically probably this last year um and in Gossip Spear, I think he's one of those guys that <clears throat> from the point he just has a knack of 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 getting the puck through. You know, often often these these offensive defensemen, it's it's obviously they they have good shots and then they can place them and whatnot, but it's just their ability to get it through that first layer and get it to the net. You know, playing with Burnsy and, and Carly, you know, in San Jose, it's it's you know there's different things that may make you successful, but, but being an offensive defenseman, it's, it's being able to get the puck through. And, and I think that's something that he, that he does really, really well. And, and then, uh, you know, it helps, helps the guys out big time when, when the puck gets down there and they can, they can make plays from there. And also uh, you were, uh, when you were growing up, the wings were in their heyday, just wondering, did you watch them much or did you follow them at all, particularly the, the goalies that they had, Hashig, Vernon, Osgood, anybody, anything stand out to you from, from that time? Yeah, I mean, the heydays kind of in the, in the late 90s, uh, early 2000s, I mean, um, I don't know if I followed the goalies as much as the team itself. I mean, my, my older sister, um you know and, and not to embarrass her in any way right but she was uh she was and probably is and, and now again it's reborn the uh she's a diehard Detroit fan and so um 
you know, she was, uh, she was big into, to that era, but, and so me just being a hockey fan, you know, I was, I was, uh, yeah, I was obviously, I think one of my favorite teams. I mean, it's, you're either a Detroit fan or a Colorado fan or a New Jersey fan probably in, in those days. And so, um, yeah, I was big, I was a big, uh, Detroit fan. Thanks James. Yep. Last question, Art Regner. Hi, James. Uh, welcome to Detroit. I, I've always been fascinated by the goalie position just because there's only two of you and you're sort of in competition with each other, yet there's only two of you. Uh, how important, and you've had a lot of partners, I guess, over your career, is it for you to establish an on-ice and off-ice kind of relationship with Huso to be able to relate to what he's going through and get a better understanding of you know what he's all about? Yeah, no, that's a great question. It is a it is a very interesting dynamic, and and honestly, I think when when there's a good relationship, I mean, that's you know, I'm not speaking anything that anybody doesn't know, but when you have a good relationship, that's when you have the most success. And and I think part of it is understanding um, that you're both competitors, right? Like you're both <laughs> you both want to play. It doesn't matter if it's a an outright number one and and an outright number two. Um, you knowing that both guys want the net, you know, as much, both guys want to play 82 games. And so, you know, I, I think that's, it's important to understand that, but it's also important to understand that, that again, the main focus is, is obviously the team and, and what's best for the team and, and how to, how to give the team um, the best chance to win every night. And so, you know, there's intricacies like that and, and, in trying to understand that dynamic. And so, I mean, the same thing for me coming in with, with who's, I mean, you know, we're going to compete against each other and yeah, we're going to, you know, enjoy life and enjoy competing against each other. And, and, um, as much as we're competing for the net and, and we both want it, you know, you're coming into here to, to try and play as much as I can, but it's, it's to help him play as best as he can too. And, and, and to push him and, and, and enable him to play his best, you know, cause our goal is, the goal is not for one guy to be playing his best. The goal is for both guys to be playing their best. And so, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to compete and, and have fun and, and uh, push each other and, and drive each other to be, to be our best. And, and, and then, you know, off ice, it's, it's, you know, get to know him and get to know his, his life, his family, you know, what he likes, what he doesn't like, you know, what, what his take on life is, you know, and I'm sure the same thing is, is, is the other way around, right. It's, uh, it's uh you know just a normal just a normal relationship like that right so i uh like i said i've heard great things about him and and i'm looking forward to to coming in and and learning about him too i mean and learning how he stops pucks i mean that's one of the greatest things about goaltending is that there's so many different ways to have success you know i think there's there's 60 plus ways to do it and so um you know i'm excited to uh to see what makes him tick and, and what makes him successful and and uh, i'm sure likewise when you look at the Red Wing blue line, the blue line core, there's certainly a veteran presence there, but you know, your, your best defenseman is 22 years old uh, in Mo Sider. I do you now, and you look at Simon Edvinson, Albert Johansson, uh, the list goes on of high end blue, uh, blue line prospects that Detroit has. Are you a chatterbox out there? Will you, uh, are you screaming at these guys or letting them know, or will, you know, if you see something, are you more than comfortable, I guess, to be a mentor to the defensive core, uh, the guys that obviously are, you know, your, uh, your last line of defense before the puck gets to you. Uh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I'm looking forward to coming into camp and, and getting to know these guys and, and um, you know, seeing what they're, what they're all about. I've, I've heard, you know, so many good things about the, the young prospects um, that Detroit has on the, on the back end. And so um, looking forward to getting to know them, but uh, yeah, I mean, personally, I, I, I talk a lot on the ice. I mean, I think it's something that's developed over, you know, the, the years I've been in the league. And, uh, and so it's something where, you know, it's just, you have a different vantage point and, and you have certain things that you like and, and, um, and so it's just another, just another voice out there. I think that that only helps, you know, communication. It only helps out there. So um, I try and talk quite, quite a bit, whether it's just basic things or, or more in-depth things. It's just, uh, I think communication is huge to, to success. And, and I think, especially as a young guy, I mean, I know I enjoyed it when, when veterans talked around me, 
you know, or talked or told me what, what I should do, where I should go, you know, in, in the heat of the moment, it, it only helps clear things up uh, on the ice. So, um, you know, I try and do that as much as I can to help out. You know, you've had a long career in the NHL. Last year, your numbers probably were not where you would want them to be. And I don't know the situation, if it was the Bedard Sweet Stakes in, in San Jose, too, or what they were really doing out there. But do you feel like you have something to prove or do you just look at last season and say, hey, man, yeah, hey, we all have a bad year once in a while. Just move forward. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I think the mindset is um, every single year you should come in with, with something to prove, you know, whether you've had a good year or a bad year. Um, kind of like I said at the start of the call, there's always that drive drive to be the best I drive to be perfect and and you know is there more when when the season didn't go the way you liked it as opposed to having a career year um you know probably um but that drive that drive should be there no matter no matter what right but um yeah talking a little bit about last year and and, and whatnot I mean I felt you know I I feel like um Obviously, the stats um, didn't reflect um, well, um, but I feel like it's also one of those things where, where I played some some really good hockey, and, and I told a few people this, but I feel like I'm I'm a better goalie uh, at the end of the year than it was was at the start of the year, and so um, learned a lot last year, and and obviously and obviously there was, you know, when things don't go your way, it's it's hard, but I felt like I I learned a lot, and 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 grew a lot and, and improved my game a lot. And so I'm, I'm excited to, to work on, to com, to continue to, you know, kind of polish those things and, and uh, have that drive to, uh, to get after it this year and, and, uh, and make it a great year. All right. One final question. And this is not hockey related, but since the moment you got on, I don't know if you're in your man cave or what, but it looks like you're really sitting on a very comfortable piece of furniture. Is that a, is it a couch? Is it a recliner? Is it a chair? I mean, it just looks outstanding. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a little recliner here in the, in our house. So uh, yeah, I know it's uh, it's 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 comfortable. Enjoying myself. Well, yeah. Well, it looks it, it, it looks it is is that the chair you go to after a long hard game or something? As soon as you get home, is that the chair that you have to sit on and decompress? <laughs> <laughs> no, this is just just a random just a random chair in the house. This is uh, this is where we uh, spend our summer. So it's uh, it's uh, yeah, just another chair. All right, great. Thank you. Appreciate it. You betcha. Thank you. All right. Those